I just wanted to make a video uh, and talk about things I've done or things I do. Uh, being homeless is is rough. It just is. Um, I've had a lot of experience. I'm what they call chronically homeless. Um, I suffer from mental health issues. Uh, so when I got back from the overseas, I just, my head doesn't work so well anymore. And we were homeless a lot as kids and just horrible background. Um, first and foremost, if you're using drugs in your homeless, go to a rehab, like pretty cut and dry. Just go to rehab. Um, they'll get you sobered up. They'll give you some tools, teach you some coping exercises, help you find a job, like do all that stuff. Um, if you are not having issues with substance substances, um, don't go to a drug and alcohol rehab. Um, don't use that resource that's very much needed elsewhere. Um, first and foremost, if you're in the U.S., uh, food stamps, state insurance. Um, you can get it for free if you're homeless. Uh, you can get a couple hundred dollars a month for food. You can get free health insurance. With the free health insurance, get your ass into therapy. Like, boom, go. It doesn't matter if you don't have any mental issues. You probably do. That's probably why you're homeless. Um, the atypical, like you just lost your job and things went to hell real bad or an unforeseen disability hit you, um, you still are, you're going to need therapy. Homelessness will rip you apart. Um, luckily I've landed in my friend's garage. Um, it is not heated and it's currently 33 degrees out right now. Um, so it's cold. Um, but, uh, therapy helps a ton. It'll help straighten your head out. Um, back when I was on the streets, uh, what I did was I got myself a nice backpack. I still have the backpack over there. It's my romping around town bag now. Um, I got that right out of the gate. Um, and then what I did, I got a change of clothes. I had two changes of clothes. I took the nicest one I had in like triple garbage bag that and stuffed it to the bottom of that bag. That was my, you know, I got to go see my therapist, a doctor, job interview, like if it was important, uh, in the past, you know, court case, you want to be presentable. Um, so like leave that there. And if you have to, the ones you're wearing, let them rot off your body. Um, a after that, it was gym membership. Um, I strongly advise if you're homeless to get to a city, there's better resources. You can try out a homeless shelter. They're not for me. I'd rather be camped up. Um, but, uh, you know, bathing has got to be first and foremost. You can go to the Dollar Tree, get yourself some a mouthwash, toothpaste, uh, some soap, go find a a brook somewhere, uh, hope it rains, um, be discreet. You don't want to be picked up by the police cause you're bathing naked in a park fountain. Um, I've seen that. I've not done it. Um, uh, gym membership, uh, back when I first utilized it, gym memberships were about $11 a piece. Now they're about 50 a month. Um, you got, you want to go in there, you know, walk on the treadmill, use the stair stepper for a half hour or so, and you get a shower. Um, if you just go in there, take a shower, come back out, they, They'll revoke your membership. They don't care. Um, that's not what the gyms are for. The gyms are for exercising and all that stuff. But exercise is really good for your mental health. You know, get a good workout in, go shower. Uh, tents, depending on where you're at and the type of homeless culture you have going on around you, where I'm at, there's a lot of people using hard drugs, uh, fentanyl and crystal meth. If you have a tent, it immediately puts a target on your back. They will unzip that thing, cut it open, come get your stuff. Um, they view it as you have some type of income or money or resources that they want, and they will take it. Um, one of the biggest things outside of the elements you have to worry about when you're homeless is other homeless people. Um, that, you don't really want to have a stationary, structured, full-blown camp going on in a city. Um, the state in the city or the county or whatever, they'll come in and sweep that stuff. They'll say... All right, you got to go. You have about enough time to grab a backpack, not really pack it, so always keep that shit packed. But after that, they will take the tent, everything, they'll throw it in the dumpster. If you try to get your stuff, they'll arrest you. Um, that is a viable option. Um, I don't condone crimes or anything like that, but if somehow you did something minor to land yourself in jail, 90 days inside, a couple meals a day, it's not so bad depending on your situation. I've done it before. Um, like I said, I do not condone any type of crime. Um, just, just don't do it. Um, out, outside of that, you want to be warm. Um, I went with a sleeping bag. I got this one right here. Um, it just good to curl up in. 
uh, in the in the summertime, something to lay on top of. In the wintertime, obviously, it's a sleeping bag. Um, and you really need to lower your desire for food. You got to lower it. Um, if you think you're going to be full every day off your food stamps, you are not going to be. Um, for a while there, I was eating one large meal a day. Um, well, every other day at, at the start, and I was doing odd jobs that I could find, whoever would give me anything. Um, so maybe I was eating one large meal at the end of the day. Um, it's nice, especially when it's cold, you got to fill your belly before you sleep to try to hold some calories so your body can keep itself warm. Um, take care of your feet. Uh, if you know your socks and underwear, if your uh, like underwear and t-shirt and jeans are all ripped up and shredded, try to replace them if you need them. Um, outside of that, you kind of want to funnel all your money to your feet. You want to keep them dry. You want to keep them warm. Simple as that. You don't want to end up with a horrible blister and abscess on your foot and then have to walk you know, two hours to a job interview. It just save yourself some grief. Um, let's see what else we got here. I can just kind of fill in. Ah, so something I did way back, way back when in 2012, when I first got home, um, a cell phone is kind of crucial, um, to finding a job that goes back to getting yourself a nice change of clothes and stuffing it in your, your backpack and forgetting about it until you need a job interview. Um, any, uh, health and human services office. Um, you see them in the larger cities, uh, on the street corners, they're giving out phones. Um, those are government issued phones. They're minute phones. Um, really, really good. You get a phone number for free, put it down on a job application. They can call you, you can go into work, you go from there. Um, outside of that, if you already have a phone and you are on some type of government assistance, again, here in the United States, um, the affordable connectivity program, takes about $25 off your phone bill. You just walk into the store and apply for it. So that's, even if you're not homeless, that's a very handy tool. Um, outside of that, like I said, with the food thing, you want to keep it simple, uh, high concentrate. You want a lot of protein. You want a lot of calories, even if they're dead calories. In the past, there's been times where, you know, I had a little bit of money and I went and got four sticks of butter and I ate that. It was gross, but the calorie intake, that's all I got. Luckily then I was 20, so like, you know, cholesterol, my heart could take it, I guess. Um, I don't recommend it long term, but it's a way to get calories in. Um, you just got to pack the calories on. Drink plenty of water. Um, that's super important. Most most places you can go to the library or restaurant, fill up a water bottle. Um, keep hydrated. That's the best you can do. You want to be off the beaten path. You don't want to be associating with other homeless people. Um, and always, 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 always be polite. Um, I was watching a video earlier of someone who is also homeless and they're doing kind of similar to what I do. Um, and they were talking about being at McDonald's and they got themselves some breakfast and they're charging their stuff. And after like 15 minutes, someone was like, Hey, you got to go. He said something like, Hey, I'm just eating something like casual like that. Uh, allegedly. Um, they called the police. The police showed up on his way out. He screamed to go after yourself. Um, He's the exact reason why they didn't want homeless people there in the first place. Uh, he perpetuated the stigma. If you're super polite, like, it doesn't matter. If you think people are going to treat you with respect and dignity, that went out the road as soon as you were homeless. That's gone. Some people will, but if you're expecting it from everybody, you're going to have some hurt feelings and you're going to be hateful to the world. Um, it doesn't matter if it's the mailman. It doesn't matter if it's it's a cashier, a teller, a cop, another homeless person. does not matter. Be polite and respectful. You can be polite and respectful. Do not expect them to be. And you never know. I've had some of the most cranky, belligerent people. Like, like I actually had one who's uh, back at the end of 2012 again. Um, I was panhandling, you know, flying a sign. Um, you know, go to a busy intersection a couple hours at rush hour and get yourself some money. Um, and uh, he pulled off and he was yelling at me, like calling me a bum, all this stuff. And like, I was like, you know, I just... I've only been in the States for like three months. I, the VA, I was in shutdown. Like I was explaining to him my situation. He was still yelling at me, all this stuff. And he, he's like, you're just going to go buy your heroin or whatever. And I was like, no, I'm off heroin. Like I was doing it, but I'm not doing it anymore. And like just this miserable looking guy, he brought me, he went to CVS and came back with a piss test and he piss tested me and it came back, uh, it came back positive for marijuana, which I had told him I had been smoking. Um, but nothing else. I was like, you know, like my leg hurts. Like I showed him the scar. I'm missing bones in my leg. My kneecap's gone. I have cadaver ligaments. Like my leg is junk. 
and it was what I was doing at the time to help with pain. Um, and, you know, he did the piss test, came back positive uh, for marijuana and negative for everything else. And he gave me like 200 bucks in a job. Um, so like, you never know. And I was polite the whole time. I was like, you know, I'm sorry, you're upset. Like, this is what's going on. Like, I didn't talk back. I didn't cuss back at him, even though I wanted to, because I'm very reactionary. But if you are polite, you will go leaps and bounds and be honest. You know, that's the same, same thing. Like, uh, when I'm like homed in, in working and gainfully employed and stuff in, the, I'll give money to panhandlers and I'll straight ask them, what are you going to buy with it? And like, I can tell who's on drugs and who's not. It's a big part of my life and my past. And like, if they're like, Oh, I'll probably, you know, get some McDonald's and a pack of cigarettes and then go get some, some other stuff. They're like, you know what? As long as like food's on that list, I believe you, you still need to eat. I'm a firm believer and people are just trying to survive. Um, but again, that goes back to the best way to get out of homelessness is go to rehab if you're on drugs. Simple as that. Um, you want to start working, save as much money as possible. Um, try to hold the mentality. If you are sleeping on the street and you, you know, you get that 200 bucks, that 300 bucks from some random job, do not go buy a hotel with it. You're going to want to, but a night or two at a hotel, not justifiable. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, that, extra couple hundred bucks can resupply you make sure you have like you know a, a buffer in the bank um again panhandle get yourself 30 bucks go open a savings account a checking savings throw it in there a lot of them have minimums you do not want to be carrying cash on you um, most banks you can deposit cash through their atm again back to the other homeless people you do not want to have cash on you that hide it in your boot bullshit that everybody says no because Back when I was out doing my thing and the other people around me were doing their thing, I'm going to take your boots. So you're just going to make it like you're going to lose it anyway. Keep it in the bank. Um, nobody can take it if you don't have it on you. Um, so like do that. You want to, you know, obviously gear towards getting a job. That's step one. Um, so if you can get some side work, get a little side hustle going, collect cans. Like if you're able bodied, like it's pretty feasible to get 20 30 dollars a day in cans you spend like 10 bucks on your meal for the day you stack up 20 bucks you can get yourself a pack of ni nice white t-shirts maybe a new pair of jeans some decent looking tennis shoes or boots uh i suggest boots um a lot of the side day labor stuff you're going to get is going to be construction landscape stuff like that um and don't be ever be afraid to walk into a, a garage somewhere and be like hey like i'm i'm trying to you know work could I like sweep the floor or something for 10 bucks? Like clean up. Like I've gotten jobs that way before of, Hey, like I'm, I'm struggling. I'm not asking for a handout. I'll work for it. And I ended up with a full-time job in the past from that. Um, th those are big ones. Um, warmth is a, is another big one. Um, I don't have to do it now. Uh, cause I have like ample blankets. I'm obviously in a structure. So like the wind is not getting in here when it rains, I don't get wet. Um, outside of that, uh, for a time there, stuffing your clothes with like crumpled up newspaper airs your friend. Um, when it gets real cold, like I would say anything above 25, you do not want two pairs of socks on. Um, it'll make your feet sweat. It'll freeze. You'll get frostbite. Big bad. Don't do that. When it drops super, super cold, then you want to start doubling up. Um, but airs your friend. Uh, same thing. If you got one decent sleeping bag. You can get in there, you get a good cushion underneath you because the ground will suck the warmth out of your body so fast. So if you can, find a pallet or something. It might not be comfortable, but get, get a buffer of air underneath you. Do not be touching the ground. Um, that's really it. Those are the stages I've been at. I, I did the therapy grind. Um, I got a phone going. I got a job. I actually just started a couple days ago. Um, I've flown signs. I've done you know, drywall and framing for, you know, not barely even $4 an hour, working 11 hour days, getting like 35 bucks for the day, maybe 50. Um, I did that for a few months. It wasn't great. Um, but like, that's, that's the best you can do. Um, canned food is going to be your friend. Um, I'm a big, big thing of, you know, peanut butter, peanut butter sandwiches. You, know, you get a big family jar of peanut butter for eight bucks, a loaf of bread for a couple dollars. You get some food for a couple days. Uh, high in protein, high calories. Um, 
if you don't want to be carrying around a loaf of bread, because you can smash it real easy. Canned food's your next best option. Um, never have more than a day worth of food on you. It sucks. It's one of the things I miss the most, the convenience of a cupboard full of canned food, a fridge full of food, a, a pantry with all that stuff, different types of breads on the counter, like I had all that stuff. Um, having multiple days of food on you, it again, it's back to why I don't condone having tents. Um, if you get a bunch of food on you, someone gets a glimpse in your backpack and it's all food, they're going to snatch that shit. Do not let that be a thing. Carry a day of food on you at a time. That is it. Like, no more than $10, $15 worth of food. It, it's simple as that. Um, if you have it, somebody else is going to want it. Um, my whole big thing with homeless shelters is, like, you will get stolen from. It's a high concentration of very unwell people. Um, you will get stolen from. Most of them say that they are dry shelters where there's actively people doing drugs in the bathroom. So if you're trying to stay sober, um, not a great environment. Uh, as far as like, oh, well, yeah, but it's heated. You can get a shower. Eh, kind of. Um, it's usually kept about 20 degrees hotter inside than it is out. Um, and about 10 degrees cooler inside than it is out, depending on the type of season. So 40 degrees out, 60 still pretty fucking cold. Um, where if like, you know, you're tucked off in a bushes somewhere, you get, you're in a sleeping bag, you get a little stick fire going. Um, again, be careful with that. Uh, it's really easy to catch fires depending on where you are. Um, try to find trash scrap stuff uh, i've seen fire pits made out of old guardrail that were like discarded on the side of the road or uh, a street sign that had fallen down like stuff like that keeping contained dig a hole build a fire surround it with rocks like do the proper thing and then uh keep keep your trash down um especially if you're in one spot you have a favorite spot do not let it fill up with trash um you can go to the dollar tree and, and get some garbage bags for $1.25 and just fill your garbage bag when it's full. Go find someone's random garbage can on garbage day. Um, if, if you're walking clearly homeless or whatever and you take a bag of rubbish and put it in someone's garbage can on, tr on trash day, most people aren't going to get mad at you. And if they do say, oh, it's just, just you know, from my camp, I didn't want to, you know, leave it on the side of the road or in the bushes or whatever, most people are going to understand it. Um when it comes to doing the right thing, if you're doing the right thing, most normal people will be understanding. Um, and that's it. Like, you, you want to be known if you're going to be homeless for a long period of time. I'm like seven, eight months deep right now um, trying to build out. Uh, like, you want to be known as the friendly homeless guy. You do. Just the, oh, I see him every day here. And, you know, he's he always says hi and God bless and all this stuff. You want to be the friendly homeless guy. Like, straight up. You don't want to be the miserable one. You don't want to be the one whacked out of his head. Because, like, it's happened a few times in the past of me just standing there, flying a sign or sitting on the side of the road at the bus stop, whatever. And people are used to having brief conversations with me. If we pass each other in the convenience store, I'm holding the door, like, stuff like that. For a few times I've had people like, hey, like... You know, I could use some help doing some yard work. If you're interested, I jump on that thing. It don't even matter. I don't ask about money. If they want to pay me $5 an hour, I don't care. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Um, the construction and framing job that I had before, I was getting about $4 an hour. And I was I was happy about it. Kept me off the street. Usually I was inside. Um, it gave me at least, like, I was spending $15 a day on a meal and, and saving 20 Got me some new clothes. I ended up getting a new job, like... It's good. Um, but you just want to be the polite, friendly guy, even though you're miserable because you're homeless. You're going to be hot as shit in the summer, cold as fuck in the winter. Oh, well, smile. You can make yourself smile. Um, and that's really it. There's other small things I could probably say about, like, you know, how to properly keep yourself warm, how to cook different meals. Um, but that's stuff you're going to have to figure out. Um, please, please just... Remember the top two most important things. Be polite, be respectful, and stay away from the other homeless people. Simple as that. It's a lot like jail. If you don't if you know you're not in the shit, there won't be no shit. Um if if another homeless person offers you a you know extra blanket, an extra fucking coat, don't take it. Don't take it. 
Like, because that, that means, you know, food stamp's going to come on the 5th, and they're going to be like, hey, that coat was 50 bucks, let's go. Like, same thing. Like, they, nothing's free on the streets. It, there's, you know, honor amongst thieves is not a thing. Like, they will they will roll your shit. And it, I've, I've seen it where, like, someone gave someone a real nice, like, $75 winter coat. And two weeks later, they're asking for the $75. And they're like, oh, I thought you were giving it to me. I don't have money. Like, just take the coat back. And it, nah. They beat this dude's ass, took the, like, 40, 50 bucks he had in his pocket, his pack of cigarettes, his phone, and the coat back. Like, don't. Just, you got to be self-contained. Um, therapy will help you a long way. And being polite and courteous and keeping to yourself will, will patch things out. Um, I myself, I just, like I said, I've only had a couple shifts. Um, I have a full-time job now. Um, I'm able to keep myself for the most part fed and like cleanly shaved. Um, and it's just digging my way out. That's all I got for you. Um, if you found any of this helpful, entertaining, you had questions, uh, if you have questions, leave a comment. Um, you share or sub, all that jazz, whatever. Um, I don't really focus too much on long form. I do a lot of shorts just about different things. Um, if I missed anything, I'm sure I'll do another video. Um, you know, so for the two people that have watched this, thank you so much for watching to the end and talk soon.